Hello. I'm going to make a response to this Yautubers video which is called, What Cosmological Argument? I'm going to attempt to deal with the criticisms of the cosmological argument, brought about in ZJ's video. For the sake of clarity I will be representing my response and the person to my right, will be offering the original arguments made in ZJ's video. Let's get started. My question to you is, what caused God? That is a very good question. However, even if this problem succeeds it denies no premise of the cosmological argument. Therefore, because both premises are true it follows logically, that the universe has a cause. But what did cause God? First off, I'd like to say, that the premise of the cosmological argument, is whatever begins to exist has a cause. God didn't begin to exist, and therefore this premise does not allow one to conclude, that God must have a cause. Dr. William Lane Craig made a really good point concerning this question. He pointed out that in order to realize, that something is the best explanation, you do not need an explanation of the explanation. For example, say if they a few archaeologists dig up a bunch of arrowheads and some pottery. They quickly conclude, that this pottery was made by some sort of intelligence. Notice that this explanation is still justified, even though they do not have an explanation for how the intelligence got there. That is because in order to realize, that something is the best explanation, you do not need an explanation of the explanation. So, in order to realize, that God is the best explanation of the origin of the universe, you do not need an explanation for God's existence. Make sense? Although this question in no way hurts, or invalidates the conclusion of the cosmological argument, it is still a good question. The answer is simple, because God caused all time to exist, God must have been outside of time. Because causal relations only happen while time exists, then God does not require a cause. How do you know that? Whatever begins to exist has a cause? Why can't being come from non-being? That is also a very good question. How could I prove such a statement, right? In all honesty I don't think anyone actually denies this premise of the argument. Do you honestly think, that something can come from nothing? Are you worried, that a raging tiger could have popped into being from nothing, and is about to pounce on you? No. Of course not. No one actually takes that seriously. If things really could come from nothing, it is inexplicable as to why everything doesn't come into being. Surely nothingness has no properties or restrictions as to what it can produce. Heck. Nothingness doesn't exist. Not only is it intuitively obvious, but it also has empirical confirmation. This principle is always verified and never falsified. What metaphysical principle has enjoyed more confirmation than this principle? So, we have good reasons both in terms of intuition and a priori arguments along with the constant verification in our experience of the world, to conclude that out of nothing, nothing comes. Aren't you just selecting which principles to use, and what to apply them to? You say God is eternal, why can't the universe be eternal? I'm not selecting what principles to use arbitrarily. Rather I selected these principles and arguments, because they are true. What about your second question? You asked, if God can be eternal, why can't the universe be eternal? The answer is simple, the universe began to exist. In fact, that is exactly what current science says. The standard Friedman Lamata Big Bang model implies a finite universe. I have to disagree with you there. The Big Bang model doesn't say that something came from nothing. That is just a common misconception. When in doubt about science, ask the scientists. What do the scientists say? I'm going to run off a few quotes. You can check out my sources in the description box. In the words of PCW Davis, and I quote, the coming into being of the universe, as discussed in modern science is not just a matter of imposing some sort of organization upon a previous incoherent state, but literally the coming into being of all physical things from nothing, end quote. Or how about Stephen Hawking? Quote, would quite literally be created out of nothing, not just out of the vacuum, but out of absolutely nothing at all, because there is nothing outside the universe, end quote. In the words of Chris LaRocco and Blair Rothstein in their online article The Big Bang, 
It sure was big, they wrote. One of the most persistently asked questions has been, how was the universe created? Many once believed that the universe had no beginning or end, and was truly infinite. Through the inception of the Big Bang Theory, however, no longer could the universe be considered infinite. The universe was forced to take on the properties of a finite phenomenon, possessing a history and a beginning. End quote. So, ZJ, I think modern science does point to a finite universe after all. Even if I admit that the universe had occurs, why must this cause be a mind? Another excellent question. Dr. William Lane Craig provides an argument for thinking that the cause of the universe was a person. He writes, moreover, I would argue, it must also be personal. For how else could a timeless cause give rise to a temporal effect like the universe? If the cause were a mechanically operating set of necessary and sufficient conditions, then the cause could never exist without the effect. For example, the cause of water's freezing, is the temperatures being below zero centigrade. If the temperature were below zero from eternity past, then any water that was around would be frozen from eternity. It would be impossible for the water to begin to freeze just a finite time ago. So if the cause is permanently present, then the effect should be permanently present as well. The only way for the cause to be timeless and the effect to begin in time is for the cause to be a personal agent who freely chooses to create an effect in time without any prior determining conditions. For example, a man sitting from eternity could freely will to stand up. Thus, we are brought, not merely to a transcendent cause of the universe, but to its personal creator. End quote. There are other arguments which try to show that a mind is the cause of the universe, but I think you get the point. All right. But, why must the cause be the Christian God? Or any sort of God-like being? Well, we have to remember what this argument is trying to accomplish. This argument is just one more argument that a Christian would make in a cumulative case for Christianity. I still think that this argument alone can prove a lot. In fact, I think we can deduce several key God-like attributes of the cause of the universe. Because this being created space-time, this being must be beyond space and time. If a being doesn't exist in space then it is spaceless and immaterial. If it exists beyond time then it is timeless. Another word for timeless is eternal, because there was never any time that existed when this being didn't exist. Furthermore, this being created all of the energy within the universe. Such a being must be enormously powerful. Finally, when you match these deductions with the argument for a personal cause, we can conclude that the cause of the universe was mind, that sans creation supernatural, or beyond the natural, spaceless, timeless, immaterial, uncaused, eternal, and enormously powerful. So, in conclusion then I think ZJ posed some good questions. In the end ZJ offered no defeater for the conclusion of the cosmological argument. Thank you for watching.